Welcome to the MUFG Global Markets Podcast with Esan Koman, Head of Commodities ESG and Emerging Markets Research EMEA. It's Friday, 17th February 2023. And in this week's podcast, Esan contextualizes the European response to the US Inflation Reduction Act. The following podcast is intended for professional investors and eligible counterparties only, and not for retail clients. Any content should not be regarded as an offer to conduct investment business or an investment recommendation, but for information purposes only. Essan, the European Union has published its 2030 Green Industrial Plan recently that in part addresses the fallout from the US's Inflation Reduction Act, that transformational $369 billion package of climate and energy spending. What are the takeaways? Thanks, Una. So, yes, the European Commission published its 2030 industrial plan that, if implemented, would lead to the introduction of a European IRA, the acronym of the US Inflation Reduction Act. Now, there is only one main objective here, Una, which is to achieve a massive increase in the manufacturing of net zero equipment and the installation of clean energy products. And, Una, we believe that this plan, if delivered, will indeed electrify Europe and largely reshore the clean energy supply chains for solar, for wind, battery storage, renewable hydrogen, heat pumps, and carbon capture, effectively launching a major reindustrialization process for clean energy manufacturing. Now, breaking this down, there are two pillars of note here. The first pillar is on the regulation. That is, the EU will require each member state to speed up the permitting of renewable facilities via the introduction of a one-stop shop approach that is a single entity in charge of granting approvals as opposed to the current multi-step process. Also, the EU is proposing time limits for the approval for these projects wherein authorizations is that it is entirely centrally overruled, which will encourage member states to boost their administrative capacities. The second pillar is on the all-important funding of this all. Now, a special European Council met on the 10th of February, wherein EU leaders agreed to a temporary relaxation of the bloc state aid rules, including via tax credits and the repurposing of unused loans within the recovery and resilience facility, that's the RRF, which by and large aims to facilitate fiscal support in the member states whose fiscal space is more limited. And in terms of quantum, Well, the RRF is set to deploy on average around 0.3% of EU GDP on a yearly basis for energy-related investments over 2023 to 2025, which total around 450 billion euros. And at the country level, the French, the German and the Italian governments have also complemented the European programmes with national initiatives. And so altogether, the fiscal programs are larger, both in size as well as share of GDP, than what the US IRA has budgeted in its fiscal spending of $370 billion over the next 10 years. And looking beyond these large numbers, we see the RE Power EU strategy as the targeted RRF line of investment that could most easily convey additional financial support to the energy sector. So critically, what's the most the strongest emphasis on is on public spending which has slowed, of course, the European energy transition, we would say that the EU has enough fiscal capacity today to provide even larger investments support than the US IRA. However, of course, it may need to adjust its fiscal policy towards tax credits to increase the private investment. Thanks, Essan. And you have been mentioning to me that this could potentially lead to major cooperation with the United States rather than competition per se. So, yes, so the EU has articulated that it plans to work with rather than against the US. And we therefore believe that the majority of EU incentives could mimic those introduced by the US IRA, which could essentially kickstart major EU-US cooperation and launch a form of what we call Atlantic IRA, in our view, with rising investments in renewables and power grids across both sides of the pond. Now, in terms of the implications of this all for corporates going forward, we are of the view that this could be the start of a major renewables capex super cycle for two key reasons. First, this is a golden age for regulation with strong policy tailwinds from both the EU and US, which are likely to support faster permits and larger investments. And second, we have better returns owing to rising market concentration and better regulation to attract private capital. So to conclude here, Una, 
the European energy crisis as well as the US IRA have indeed increased the urgency to accelerate the EU green energy transition to secure the region's power independence from Russia. And there is much to like about the EU IRA for companies who have been threatening to shift investment across the Atlantic to benefit from the US IRA, which was a major theme, in fact, of our Energy Outlook 2023 piece last month. And that is high unit energy costs across Europe, coupled with the favorable green subsidies and tax credits on offer in the US, could have seen the acceleration of de industrialization in Europe. And hence, we expected a European response, and we have this in the form of the 2030 Green Industrial Plan. So looking ahead, the EU has the capability to accelerate investments in renewables, and the European Council has determined that there is also a willingness. And with that, the next catalyst point will be the 23rd and 24th of March European Council meeting, which will finally clarify the timeline. Thanks very much for sharing your insight, Essan. Have a great week, and we will speak to you again next week. Thanks, Luna. Talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to this MUFG Global Markets podcast. Rate, review and subscribe and reach out to your MUFG sales rep for more information. Come back next week for more insights from the Global Markets Research Team.